Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Shading Nerd Kit from Moto Nerdistry. It is available for 15 bucks over on Gumroad, and I'll put the link in the description below. All right, let's jump over to Moto and take a look at what this does. So the first thing you'll notice after installing the Shading Nerd Kit is that you have new icons. So if I look over here in the item list, I've got a new updated camera icon and some area light icons there. All the light icons are new and all the shader tree icons are new. And I'll get to those in a second because those are fantastic. Now, they're much more polished and modern looking than Moto Standard icons, but it can still be a little bit jarring when you um, are used to just the normal Moto icons and you jump in and you're like, oh, the icons are different. Uh, but these are way better and it does give Moto a more polished and modern look. And they really shine on the shader tree side. So go to the shader tree side, you'll notice some different uh, material icons, environment icon right off the bat, a little different render icon. And it only takes a few minutes to get used to them. Like I, I just installed this like an hour ago and I'm like already used to it. So it's not something I think you need to worry about in terms of like, you know, getting used to sort of different icons and having to, you know, see what, remember what they look like. The main thing with the Shading Nerd Kit is the custom preset browser. You can see this button right here above the shader tree. If I click it, I get the Shading Nerd custom preset browser with some just fantastic informative icons in it. So I'm just actually going to uh, blow these up a little bit bigger just so I can scroll th through them and show you what it looks like. You notice that they're all sort of divided in half down the middle. So the lower right hand is what they look like displaced, like as a displacement map. And then the top, upper left is obviously the pattern. And they're really easy to look at, you know, just from a glance, obviously constant. You can drag through here, gradient, image, obviously occlusion. So they'll have really well thought out uh, process icons and, you know, vertex map, variation texture. And they're super helpful with the Moto Enhanced Textures. So if I go over here to like add layer, like the normal way you do it and go to Enhanced Moto Textures. Now, as you know, these are just a whole bunch of really cool procedural textures in Moto. Um, and my list is sort of falling off my screen here, but there's just, there's a ton of them. They're all in like subcategories and they have names like uh, Frog Skin and, you know, Hurricane and just stuff that doesn't necessarily make makes sense, uh, you know, crackle of, what does that look like, right? So, you know, it doesn't even give you much to go on, but if you look at the uh, Shading Nerd Kit here and I go over to these, let's say I look at skins, and I wanna know what frog skin looks like, well, it looks like that. You've got a really nice icon, and it's right there along with all the others, and it really, you know, w lets you know what these are gonna look like without having to do some test renders or bring them in the scene and see if it's what you want. You can really just sort of browse through these and, and decide if, you know, what you want is right here. So again, normally you would select a mask and go to this menu right here and pick from these nested text things. And this is just a slightly different workflow. You're popping this up. And then if I want a gradient, I can just go down to gradient or you can also, it has a search bar right up here as well. Just start typing that in, get grad, and I can double click it. And it's gonna put it right there in my group, just like that. Now what's cool is I can also select multiple groups. And if I don't have any items selected in the scene, I can, uh, double click it and it'll put it in both groups. Now Moto won't actually do that. If I were to select two groups like this and come over here and say add layer or special fur material, it only puts it in the last selected group or maybe the first selected, I can't remember, but it only does it in one of them. Let me just go ahead and delete the fur material, don't need that in the scene. That is definitely a workflow enhancement there. So I'm just gonna throw one of my presets here. You can save presets from this little arrow drop down menu and I've got a couple in here I like to use just when I make these demos, so I'll throw a couple preset gradients on here. Maybe uh, this one, and maybe some green and cyan. Okay, there we go. And also the advanced viewport does a nice job showing gradients if you don't use the advanced viewport. It's actually getting closer and closer to showing us um, what we're actually gonna be seeing in our rendered view here. I can also use the shortcut shift in to bring up my preset browser as in new, like a new layer. And I could throw in, let's just do some nice like organic looking thing here. Maybe uh, the concrete noise looks good. You just double click that and we'll set this to, I don't know, put it uh, maybe diffuse amount or something like that. So that's a really nice way of working as well. Again, select your mask, press shift in, and then just pick, you know, whatever. I'll pick some uh, some dots, maybe I always like dots. And again, we'll just set these to uh, diffuse amount. And again, what I really like about these icons is that, you know, the same icons are here in the shader tree. So there's a few, again, shift in to pop it up, like a vertex map texture. Again, like you, you pop that in, that little red dot there, that just, you know, it's super obvious what that is right off the bat, just by seeing the little icon there. So you have good at a glance icons for a lot of this stuff. Where you don't have to read the, the, the uh, 
description next to it. And again, I love the, the shader tree in Moto because it's so compact, right? It just takes up a little tiny bit of space, not some giant um, nodal workflow window that you have to use in Maya or some other program to do your shading. It just takes up a little tiny space here and you get a lot of information at a glance, right? So. There's also some nice little keyboard shortcuts and pie menus in the Shading Nerd Kit. So I can select my group here, the side group, and do control space. And I get some really common things like material or shader or group or image map. So I want to put an image map in there. I just swipe that way. I don't have to do shift in or open the preset browser or go to this add layer. I just, just hover over it, control space, image map. Boom, done. That's, you know, for a lot of people, that's 90% of their workflow right there. They could just pick an image map for my little browser right here. Now, if I want to change these effects, if I want to change this roughness map to the roughness, I can shift space and I can change my effects either here from basic. You have these sub menus. These are diffuse color and, and, and diffuse roughness, luminous color. Or I can go over to specular and say roughness. Now I've got this roughness map right here. Or I can also have other things like surface special for bump and displacement, stuff like that. So... Really nice, that's shift space for the effect and control space for a new layer item. And again, uh, render outputs are pretty nice. I can get a, you know, a sub you know, pie menu there, so I can get a final color render output there if I want. Whatever you want to do. So it's just you know well thought out, pretty quick. Um, and you just have to condition yourself to doing this new workflow, right? So there's, there's no question in my mind, like adding an image map, just control space and swipe adding an image is, is just, way faster and also like selecting two things if i want to add some fractal noise shift in and then just you know do a uh, you know noise up here and again if i select it and double click it it's going to put it in both of them instead of just one at a time like you expect you know in any sort of 3d program to do so again it it, it circles around some of the limitations that are built into moto which really sh probably shouldn't be there and it gives you these awesome icons and it gives you these awesome icons and it gives you uh, just some nicer, you know, pie menus and, and ways of working. So, yeah, Shading Nerd Kit, $15. I think it's, a, you know, a pretty obvious buy. And it also just supports the community. And, you know, more people will create these kinds of low-cost, really functional, beneficial kits uh, if we buy them. So I'm going to put the link below, and I'm going to suggest you go out there and buy the Shading Nerd Kit. And, I mean, just look at that shader tree. It's just so much nicer looking when it has these nice icons in here. And there's just no question, this is just a really nice way of working, especially if you use a lot of procedurals and you're looking at all this stuff. I mean, there's just really beautiful thumbnails in here. Yum, yum.